All right, good evening, everyone. Happy Wednesday afternoon to you. What a blessing it is to be on top of the ground. The ground is still not yet on top of us. God is still in control. Makes no difference what you see on TV, what you read in the newspaper, what you see on Facebook, or what you see online. God is still in control. And I don't know about you, but I am just thankful to know that he still is in control. And he's worthy to be praised. You ought to give God praise. You ought to give God thanks. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, we wouldn't be here right now. We are able to make it through what we're going through simply because the Lord is on our side. And I am so tickled to death that you join me this evening as we continue to look in Philippians chapter 4. Because we understand that Paul's words to the church at Philippi are words that are very applicable and practical for our day-to-day -day living. And as saints of God, the letter that Paul writes to the church at Philippi is words that we need to receive and accept in order to be able to endure and withstand in the time in which we are living in. Paul gives us classic example of how we as Christians can endure the storms that we endure in this life if we have the same mind that Christ had. And that's what Paul has in the writing of this text uh, as he uh, sits incarcerated down in Rome waiting to go before Emperor Nero. So my brothers and my sisters, this particular letter of Paul is a letter that I love dearly. I found a lot of nuggets. I found a lot of inspiration. I found a lot of guidance. And it teaches me how I can go through the things that I'm confronted by in this life. And so it's just good to see you. Let us take a time and take a moment and uh, go in prayer. And then we shall come back and begin our study for tonight. Eternal Father in heaven, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings. Thank you for life, up and strength. Thank you, Lord God, for just keeping us through this day and bringing us to this appointed time. We are thankful, Lord God, for everyone, Lord God, that shall come and be a part of this time we spend together. We pray, Lord God, that you make this time prolific. We, you make this time productive. You make this time, Lord God, powerful. And Lord God, we realize right now that this time needs to be personal. Help it be have a purpose uh, for us as saints of God, that we receive those things that you will have us to receive, that will help us, Lord God, to let our light shine a little brighter, help us to be more firm in our stand, help us, Lord God, to endure having to follow a little more than we've been enduring. And Lord God, most of all, but help us to become more like Jesus Christ. Now, Lord God, we thank you. We pray the blessing upon each and every one. We ask for the guidance of thy Holy Spirit, the illumination of thy Holy Spirit, that, Lord God, that we can see your word clearly and we can understand it for ourselves and that we can become whom you have called us and chosen us to become. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. All right, again, good to see everyone. Thank God for you. Uh, we're in the book of Philippians. Yeah, I'm a slow travel, but uh, those uh, saying a, a rolling stone uh, don't gather much moss. So I'm gathering moss. I want to gather moss. I, I take my time. I, I'm not in a rush because, I, I, hey, when it's all said and done, I only got one place to go, and that's to heaven. So I'm taking my time, and I thank God for you. Now let me remind you, my brothers and my sisters, if you hear something that resonates with you, please, ma'am, please, sir, don't be ashamed to own it. You can own it by commenting. You can own it by uh, hitting the like button, and you can own it by sharing it. Because this word that we share is not just for me, not just for you, but for all of us. And that's what I like about God's word. God's word is, is for all of us as saints of God. And I need to uh, caution you that when Paul writes this particular letter, uh, in, in special fourth chapter, Paul wants us to understand that he's not talking to the unbelievers, but he's talking to the believers. He's not talking to the ants. He's talking to the saints. 
He's talking to those that have been born again. And that's very important that you understand this and understand uh, this, uh, put this in perspective and understand this is the only way that we can do the thing that Paul uh, teaches us to do in Philippians chapter 4. Remember now, Paul writes this letter basically for four, for four reasons. Number one, he wanted to curb any type of criticism the church at Philippi might have against Epiditus. Epiditus was the missionary that the church at Philippi sent to see about the Apostle Paul to be a companion as well as bring him some financial assistance. Secondly, Paul wanted to write to tell the church, thank you. If it ever been time we need to teach our children that the, no one owes us anything, we're not entitled to things, but when people do things for us, we ought to have an attitude of gratitude. We ought to be thankful, and we ought to learn how to say thank you. Uh, it, 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 it irks me when people do something for other people, and uh, people won't open their mouth and tell them thank you. Now, now, my brothers and my sisters, uh, we have gotten so far from the Lord. We have gotten so far from being humble that we don't realize that it couldn't be, it, it, it doesn't have to be that way. Folks don't have to be kind to you, nor to me. We have to learn to be appreciative when folk does things for us. And, 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 and sometimes, you know, it might not necessarily be that you are in need of something, but you receive whatever anybody is giving you because the way you respond might affect them the next time in their willingness to give. You might hurt the next person that comes behind you. So always have a, you know, uh, one of the things that, I'm going to tell you one of my weaknesses is, be honest with you, one of my weaknesses is, it's not easy for me to receive. It's easy for me to give. I don't mind giving. But it, 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 uh, because I'm so used to giving, I don't understand that I have to also be able to receive. They go hand in hand. And so when people are willing to do something for you, you be appreciative of it. And you learn how to receive because most, as a style of God, it cometh from out of love. Now, other folks might have ulterior motive, but when a child of God does something for you, they are doing it out of love. And you don't want to fear no one. Learn to receive and be receptive of it. And if it's not something that you can use, God might have used you as the conduit to give it or to share it with somebody that does need it. But whenever somebody does something for you, you tell them thank you. Paul uh, 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 let the Philippian church know that he was appreciative of what they had done. But he also told them that he had learned in whatsoever state that he's in to be content. He had learned to live with, and he had learned to with, live without. But he still is appreciative of what they have done for him. They didn't have to do it, but they did. And the reason why I believe they did it was because of the Spirit of God that lived in them. When the Spirit of Christ lived in you, it, He will cause you to go beyond. He will cause you to do things that the ordinary person wouldn't do. Because now you got to remember the last time that Paul saw the Philippian church before uh, Epiditus showed up. Was about 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. 10 years. So let's learn how to be appreciative, have an attitude of gratitude, and let folks know that you that I, I don't I don't feel worthy of what you're giving me, but I'm appreciative that you have enough love in your heart to share it with me. I'm not entitled to it, 
No, I'm not entitled to it. But because you belong to God, God move on your heart to give it to me. I received this. I received this and I accept this. Thank you. Now, the third thing, the reason why Paul writes this particular letter is that Paul wants to teach about unity. My brothers and my sisters, if the church is going to reach the pinnacle of her potential, we must have unity. If the church is going to reach the pinnacle of her potential, the highest level, we must have unity. And my brothers and my sisters understand what Paul teaches us. Paul teaches us, my brothers and my sisters, that there is only one body, but many members. Now, we, when he says that, he's talking about the universal church, the, where Christ is the head of the church. Now, let's put it in perspective to our local church. And our local churches, wherever you are a member at, you got to remember that ought to be one body. And a body that has two heads is a mystery. They got two ways of thinking. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And the church ought to be stable. So in other words, let me tell you something. All them little pastors y'all got in the, in, in the pews, or you caught on the telephone, you need to shut them down because God said he'll give you a pastor according to his heart. That will feed you a knowledge and understanding. So you, you need to cut out all these little pastors that uh, uh, are sitting in the pews trying to tell you or lead you. you they can't lead you un unless you want to fall in the ditch. The blind say, how can, the Bible says, how can the blind lead the blind unless both of them fall in the ditch? And so my thing is, you need to make sure you're hearing from the right one. And the right one ain't the one that get on the phone and gossip about everybody, talk about everybody, talk about everything that they don't know, but they think they know, don't, don't have no idea of what's going on in other people's house. The gospel, my brothers and my sisters, is the word of God. And one thing about the gospel of, of God is the gospel of God is going to uh, uh, accomplish that, what God sends it out for. And it's not to be destructive. It's not to condemn man, but it's to save man. Man ought to be convicted by the gospel. To the point that he come to the realization that he has sinned against God and that he seek repentance from God. And he goes to God and God, he goes to God through Christ Jesus and he received the repentance and he's restored into the family. He's adopted into the family. He's adopted into the family. And once he's adopted into the family, he becomes a son or a daughter of God. And my brothers and my sisters, God's talking about uh, 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 trying to make people feel bad. No, no, no. It ain't God's talking about trying to make people feel good. The gospel is trying to help people to become more godly. None but the righteous shall see Christ. See God. Now listen. Now, in order for us to be righteous, we must receive God's righteousness. In Romans chapter 10, it teaches us that Jesus Christ is God's righteousness. And he is, if we receive him, it is the inner law for us. We don't have to, we're no longer under law, but we're under grace. And we're made righteous because of him, not because of our actions or our lack of action, but we're made righteous because of him. Not because of your title, not because of your position, not because of how long you've been tabernacling around a church, not, be not because you can quote scripture, not because you can sing song, not because you got gifts, but we're made righteous because we have the relationship with God through Christ Jesus. We are in Christ and Christ is in us. Are y'all here with me? And so we don't have to go around and try to prove to nobody how righteous we are.
All right, you guys. Let's see here. I lost you. Let me see here. Okay, hold on one second here. I, I lost you. Okay, let me get back here. Okay, 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 okay. Let's see here. All right, here we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I, I, I went off the stream, but at least you got a break. Your eyes didn't hurt too long, too much, okay? You got a break from looking at me. That's a good thing. But my brothers and my sisters, so Paul tells them about unity. Unity is very important. And if you're going to be unity, you have unity. One of the most important quality or traits you need to have is that of humility. Humility. Learn how to humble yourself, surrender uh, uh, your will, surrender your way, surrender your thoughts, surrender your belief system, surrender it unto God. Come under the submission of God and be guided by the Holy Spirit. Now, the fourth thing is Paul wanted to write and give instruction on dealing with a uh, situation that's going on between a couple of Christians down in the Philippian church and that Yosef and Sisney. Uh, chapter 4, verse 2 mentioned their name. Now, I want to go back to verse 1 because I want to do a little bit more. Last week, I felt like I was hindered by something, by the enemy. But I'm here tonight and I feel great. I, I, I feel in, in, in step. I feel in order tonight. And I want to go back because there were some things I wanted to say I didn't say last week. Because I want you to understand, my brothers and my sisters, as we talk about peace tonight, that this is what we need in order to make it through. And God has given us peace. He has given us peace. You got peace if you are a saint tonight. If you are a saint tonight, you got peace. But now the question is, are you maintaining your peace? Now, Let's go to uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 1. And that's why I'm going to hang my hat at tonight. Verse 1. I'm staying with verse 1 because a lot of meat that I want to share with you tonight. Listen to what it said. Therefore, my, my brethren, dearly beloved and long for, my joy and crown so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Now, last week, now, last week, I we talked and I was talking last week. We talked about defining peace. And you know, the first time when you said peace, everybody think about the absence of conflict. No war. Everybody is in good standing. But the peace we're talking about is greater than the absence of conflict. You can have the absence of conflict. And be in a war internally. But when you got peace, the peace that we're talking about, the peace of God, conflict can be all around you, but yet peace is within you, the believer. And I wonder, if anybody know what I'm talking about? Have trouble ever just been all around you? Is, is there anybody that ever had a, a Job saga? That if it ain't one thing is another, when it rains, it pour. Everywhere you look, trouble, huh? You trap uh, between four walls. But yet, you have peace. Well, the peace that we're talking about is a wholeness and a completeness. That there is no emptiness. And my brothers and my sisters, when you understand that peace uh, we're talking about, meaning to be whole and complete, then you understand that this cannot be uh, 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 for the unbeliever. This passage is for the believer. The whole point of this passage is talking about the peace of God and the presence of God's peace. When you look at Philippians chapter 1, I mean chapter 4, verse 1 through 9, 
It's talking about the peace of God. And then it's talking about the presence of God. Peace down in that ninth verse. But there are six steps that a believer. I said the key word believer. Not unbeliever. I didn't put that young prefix on on that. But a believer uh, must take to maintain the peace of God within his heart and his life are listed here in verse 1 through 9. And now, if you fail to take these steps, you need to understand that you're going to grieve both the Lord and fellow saints. Because the fact is, those who have made special contribution to your growth is going to see you begin to fall by the wayside. Because when you lose your the peace of God, a couple of things happen. Number one, what first thing happened? You become conscious, you become sly and guilty and discouraged and defeated. I hate to see a child of God walking around here discouraged and defeated. You need, I need to understand that Satan has some spirit that wants to infiltrate us that is not of God. And, and 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 being discouraged, being defeated, being depressed is not a God. Those things are not a God. Those things are things that bring us in and uh, takes us away from God. Those things are things that cause us not to have faith in God. When you're defeated, then that tells me that you believe that you cannot overcome what have come up against you. But the Bible teaches us, if God be for us, who can be against us? And if God is with us, my brothers and my sisters, we are not defeated, but we are victorious. And we ought to ultimately always understand and always remember without a shadow of doubt, whatever we are going through makes them different if we've been beaten as the song said, level to the ground, we ought to always remember that we are still victorious. They might have their feet on us. Satan might have him and his hellhound feet on us. But yet, and still, we are not defeated. We got to remember this, saints of God, that when Jesus Christ went to Calvary, out there on that hill, when he was lifted up, like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. My brothers and my sisters, we have the opportunity to uh, enjoy victory by receiving Christ Jesus. Because if we look upon Christ, if we receive Christ and accept him as our Savior, my brothers and my sisters, we become victorious. And no wonder the hymn writer says, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart will roll away, and now I am happy all the day. Now listen, you can be happy, you can, uh, you can choose to be sad. When things come to us, I keep telling pioneers this, it's not so much what happened to us, it's how we respond to those things that happened to us. When we look at them through the lens of the flesh, my brothers and my sister, it will cause us to become defeated. But when we look at them through the lens of faith, it reminds us that God has greater, bigger, and better waiting on us. It reminds us that these things, these light afflictions, working for more better for exceeding greater reward. It reminds us that these weapons, they form, but they cannot prosper. I'm not defeated. You might be getting the best of me right now. This might be getting the best of me right now. But some way, somehow, God has already fixed this thing where if the table is going to turn, you meant it for evil. But God is going to turn it and make it for my good. Come on here, Joseph. 
And that's what we have to understand. When we have the peace of God, that gives us the complete assurance that we are victorious because we know that what we have, man didn't give it to him. Man can't take it away. And greater is what we possess than whatever this world contains. Now, not only that, but when you lose peace with God, you become critical. You're mumbling, grumbling, and you're, you're divisive. And you, I, I wonder how many of y'all ever seen these people that walk around, only they do is mumble. They grumble. They miserable, y'all. They miserable because they are lacking completeness. Misery loves company. Misery tried to find company to Feel that emptiness, that incompleteness. But people, listen, 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 listen. You and I will never be satisfied until we come into the relationship with Jesus Christ. And those of you that are in a relationship with Jesus Christ, you ought to be able to say amen to that. You will never become content until you come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Saints of God, y'all to be witness to that. Because I don't know about you all, but I'm more content now than I ever been before. What I have or don't have, whether I'm like or don't, I'm not like. How whether I am popular or unpopular, those things don't bother me. Those things don't bother me. Whether I'm on front stage or on backstage, that's irrelevant to me. Because I have a completeness within me. I am whole. Jesus said those who are sick need a physician. But if you're whole, you need not a physician. And my brother and my sister, Jesus came because we were not whole. There was a gap. There was a hole in us, an emptiness in us. And that emptiness was the presence of God in our lives. Jesus bridged the gap. Jesus filled the hole. Jesus took away the emptiness for us as saints. And when things happen, we've learned from the word of God that Paul teaches us even in Philippians. He said, do all things without murmuring and grumbling. We, we, we have to understand, remember that who we are. We too often allow things that happen in our life, our enemy, to cause us to forget who we are. We are a child. We are God's children. We are the children of God. And the children of God are not mummers. They are not grumblers, but they are praisers. Because they realize that the source of the one that giveth them everything promised that he would not withhold any good and perfect gift from those that love him. He promised us that he would supply all of our needs. He promised us that he would take care of us. He promised us that he would be there when we need him the most. He promised us that he will provide. He promised us that he will regulate our mind, that he will go before us, he will go behind us, and he'll come beside us. So, my brothers and my sisters, when we look around, we might not have the top things of the world, the more uh, eloquent and the exquisite things of this life, but we have the greatest, the most priceless, the most uh, 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 un never can be a price tag gift of eternity. We have Jesus Christ. We have Jesus Christ. My brother, my sister, uh, thank you, uh, Mother uh, uh, Annie Cox, uh, the, the, the wife of uh, 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 the late Reverend Cox, when I was a boy, uh, pastor preacher, some uh, ten years ago, she 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 dealt with she dealt with an Alzheimer's disease. But one thing that old lady would say, uh, 
you can uh uh have the whole world, but just give me Jesus. Now she's saying something. Uh you better make sure that your anchor grip the solid rock, and that solid rock is Jesus. If you got Jesus, you got all you need. And he gives you peace. Remember what he said. The Lord, when he met uh, uh, Moses on the backside of the mountain, he, he told Moses, now listen, Moses, when you were out there talking to them folk, when they ask you who sent you, you tell them that I am that I am. I am whatever you need. Whatever you need, God is able to be it for you. Not only for you, but for me. Whatever we need, God is able to provide it for you as well as me. And so my brothers and my sisters, when we lose our peace of God, then we begin to mumble and grumble. But when you have a peace of God, you are just thankful for what you have. You go through storm. But I thank God for my uncle. He, he, he used to he said, you know, I preached a preacher sermon one time, and he said, this was my favorite sermon. He said, thank God for what's left. When you go through a storm and things are taken away from you, you still ought to look around and be able to tell the Lord, thank you. But you can't tell the Lord, thank you, when you don't have the peace of God in you. See, when you have the peace of God in you, when the storm comes and takes things away from you, you can tell the Lord, thank you, because you are complete. You understand that the things of this world are only temperate. That's only for a moment. But see, Jesus taught us not to lay our treasure up down here on earth where thieves can break in and steal. Steel, where malt and rust can corrupt, but we ought to lay our treasure up in heaven. And by laying our treasure up in heaven, whenever a loss transpires, we don't have to worry because wherever your treasure is, there's also your heart. Satan, he can steal things down here, but he can't steal nothing up in glory. You know why people can't praise God in your local church on Sunday morning? It's because they have lost the peace of God. They don't see how good God is. When God wakes us up in the morning, when God clothes us in our right mind, when God gives us a reason, portion, help, and strength, my brother and my sister, that's enough to shout about. You might not have a dime in the bank, but you, hey, you got another day of life. Hey, you got mental capacity and you got physical ability. Hello, somebody. Hey, 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 hey. Don't you know there are seasons, all kinds of seasons in life? There'll be time with, there'll be time without, and there'll be time with again. Hey, it's a cycle. There's a time unto all things, according to the preacher in Ecclesiastes. But we have to understand, my brothers and my sisters, make no difference what season we are in, our God is faithful. Our God is true. Our God is going to take care of his children. And when we know that, when we are complete, and again, our completeness is when we get that relationship with God through Christ Jesus. When we are complete and whole, then we can have peace. And our peace will not let us mumble and grumble. While everybody else is complaining, we're walking around thanking God. We're walking around praising God because we realize, my brothers and my sisters, that we're just only passing through this place, we're going through this place. Our home is on the other side. And in our home, our home is a prepared place for prepared people. And we are preparing ourselves to go to our home by being praises and not people walking around here uh, being pitiful and being complaining, mumbling, and, and grumbling. There's no mumbling and grumbling over in heaven. That's only his praise. And, 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 and the thing about it is, we need to understand about what genuine and authentic praise is. You can't have a genuine and authentic praise until you have peace with God. 
When you have peace with God, then you have the peace of God. And then you can, if you, when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all the Lord has done for you, even though you're going through, even though you are in the midst of, even though you're being uh, uh, slaughtered, even though you're being bamboozled on every side, even though it seems like you've been knocked from one side to the other side, bumping your head against this wall and that wall, you can still tell the Lord, thank you. Because in the knocking, it did not my sense out because I still got enough sense to lift my eye to the hill from which cometh my help, my help coming from the Lord who made heaven and earth. And what I love about him, he will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that uh, 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 watches over Israel neither slumber nor sleep. If he doesn't slumber or sleep, and I know he got his eyes on the sparrow, I know that the Lord got his eyes on me. Nothing happened to a child of God without God already knowing about it. And if God allowed it, you better remember what Paul said, Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. There got to be a wholeness. The wholeness come about through the relationship with God through Christ Jesus, the presence of God within our life. And my brothers and my sisters, when we get that presence of God, we need to understand that it changes us because of the peace of God that is released, that is flooded within our soul. We don't see things like we once saw we don't view things like we once viewed them. We don't uh, uh, think of things like we once thought of them. We look at them through a whole different perspective. Because we realize that we have the sovereign God on our side. That we belong to Him. And see, when you lose the peace of, of, of God... One more thing I want to tell you, it'll cause you to slip back in the sin. My brothers, my sisters, God wants us to move forward out of sin, not backwards into sin. My brothers, my sisters, we ought to understand that God is calling for us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, we have to understand that the only way that we can move forward, we must have the peace of God. Now, I, like I told you, once we uh, 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 come into relationship with God through Christ Jesus, God floods our soul with peace. He gives us his peace. God has given us many things, but the question then arises, how do we maintain? Now, I, I, a couple of Sundays ago, a few Sundays ago, I start talking about uh, 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 spiritual neglect. God has given us everything we need for the journey, but do we take the time to maintain? A lot of it, 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 it is. It's easy to acquire, but it's more challenging to maintain. Hello, somebody. You can acquire a brand new car, but if you don't have enough finance, it's going to be challenging for you to maintain that car. Same thing with a house. I'm just putting it in like that way. Now, Understand, God has given us peace. You know, we sing the song, this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me, this peace I have, the world didn't give it to me, all that. We sang that song. But we have to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that it's more to it than just saying it. We say, can't take it away. Well, if we don't maintain it, We'll lose it. 
We have to maintain what God has given us. We have to maintain that peace. Because Satan is a thief. And, 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 and you know, <laughs> I ain't going to go with the old saying they were, uh, used, to, <laughs> used to say about uh, could steal the stink off of something. No, I ain't going to use that one. But Satan can steal the skin off of your body and you wouldn't know it. That's how low down. That's how conniving. He is. And 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 that's the reason why Jesus said that uh we ought to be we ought to watch as well as pray. Satan is moving. And see, some folk have gotten so drunk or intoxicated on themselves that they don't realize that Satan has stole or they have lost their peace. And that's the reason why we have to continuously stay before God. That's the reason why we have to get his word in us. That's the reason why we have to give an ear to the Holy Spirit. He's not there to be just sitting up in there. He's not a hitchhiker. No, no, he's not. He's riding with you as a saint of God, but he's not a hitchhiker. Satan, I mean, uh, 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 the Holy Spirit, he's our partner. He's our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our guidance. He's our coordinator. Are you with me? Now, now, now listen. When you look at verse number one. The Apostle Paul says, if we're going to maintain our peace, first thing we got to do is stand fast in the Lord. Stand fast in the Lord. That, 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 that's what we got to do, stand fast in the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, do we know that everybody is not a friend of the cross, of Christ? There are enemies of the cross, of Christ. Everybody don't want it to be proclaimed that Jesus Christ died out on Calvary. Everybody don't even want the name Jesus to be mentioned. My brothers and my sisters, we need to understand that although there are enemies of Christ, of the cross, that we are friends of Christ and the cross. We are believers of Christ and the cross. And we have to stand firm in the Lord. Now, when you look at chapter uh, 4 and verse 1, you know that Paul mentioned the word therefore. When Paul, the word therefore is mentioned, it's referring to something that preceded the present or that is which to come. It's something back behind before it was said before, therefore. And when Paul talks about therefore, mentioned therefore, Paul is trying to call into our remembrance Roman chapter, I'm not Roman, but Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and verse 21. And it said, for our conversation is in heaven. From which also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. My brothers and my sisters, understand 
that these two verses, Paul is telling us that we need to remember that we are not citizens of this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. We are pilgrims. We are traveling through this very land. And and, and, and think about it as pilgrims, we ought not to get attached to the things or to the land in which we are traveling through. Because we realize that what's ever in this land is temperate. But in our home, in heaven, everything is eternal. And we have to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that God wants us to have peace. And if we're going to have peace, we must stand firm in the Lord. So whenever things come up against us, no matter how great the trial, no matter how great the pressure or temptation, no matter how great the influence or the offer or allurement made by others, we must stand fast in the Lord. Now, my brothers and my sisters, when we are under attack, we are not to flinch. Because, uh, Deacon Francis, you saw it Sunday, Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. Make me uh, lay awake at night. But that's all right. Because you know the reason why? Jesus. He will fix it. After what? <laughs> yeah, you got to cry at night. Cry during the night season of life. But thank God that night season don't last all way. Joy is going to come in the morning. Don't get comfortable with the stations of life in this world. Well, you up and down, don't get comfortable with it. Because it's only temporary. You might, hey, hey, I keep saying, you might be with right now. But in this life, there'll come a time you're going to be without. It's irrelevant to a child of God simply because of the fact he has the peace of God. Look at Paul. Look at Paul. As he writes this letter, my brothers and my sisters, Paul is incarcerated. But Paul, before he was incarcerated, he was liberated. He was able to go. He was free. But the thing about it is, when Paul was free to walk and to travel on his missionary journey or incarcerated, Paul never did lose his faith in Christ. He was able to go to whatever uh, a particular station of life he was in because he had the peace of God. And, 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 and that's what we need to understand, that we have to stand firm in the Lord. When you stand firm in the Lord, my brothers and my sisters, that means that you have settled. You're not wobbling about. But you know where your faith lies. You know who you believe in. You know who you can trust. My brothers and my sisters, you know, in other words, when you stand firm in the Lord, let me tell you what it really means. You keep your eyes on Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, that's the key. Stand firm in the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus. When you're going through things, keep your eyes on Jesus. When trouble comes, keep your eyes on Jesus. When, when prosperity comes, because people don't understand that everybody think trouble, bad things are, are the biggest problem. No, but prosperity is a problem for some of us. It caused some of us to become big headed and we lose our spiritual equilibrium and we start stumbling, we start falling. What's in a drunk man? We don't know how we become so uplifted in ourselves in pride and, and we become all self 
And I, I, we think we are self-sufficient and self-righteous. But my brothers and my sister, if we're going to be who we are supposed to be, the children of God, we must keep our eyes on Jesus. And we keep our eyes on Jesus. We can weather any type of storm. We can weather any fair sunny day. We can weather anything that come up against us. Remember the apostle uh, 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 Peter? He wasn't an apostle back then, but he was a disciple, Peter. You remember Peter and the disciple being on the ship? And in the midst of a storm, they was afraid, but they became even more afraid when they saw a figure walking on the water. They know it was, you know, they thought it was a ghost or something. Thought it was one of them Hanks. But when they recognized it was Jesus, Peter asked of the Lord to allow him to come to him. It was Jesus walking on the water. In the midst of the storm. In the midst of the storm. The storm is still. Look at it. Look at it. Wind is still blowing. Lightning is still flashing. Thunder is still roaring. Water is still. Waves are dashing. But yet Jesus. Have enough balance. To walk on the water. In the midst of a storm. And when Peter passes his eyes. On, he asked the Lord, let me come to you. And Jesus said, come on, Peter. And when Peter took a step out that ship onto water, scientists said that the natural force of gravity should have pulled Peter down because his weight was too heavy, heavier than the density of water. But yet when Peter stepped out, natural forces had to step back because the supernatural power of Christ was the focus of Peter. As long as Peter had his focus on the supernatural power of Christ, Peter was able to walk on water. But, there's a but. Yeah, he, he was able to do things that were beyond the, com the, 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 the comprehension of mankind by walking on water. But when you start focus on the supernatural power of Jesus Christ. My brother and my sister, you can go through some stuff that would cause the mere person to just throw up their hands and give up. That would cause a crazy man to become even more crazier. Because that's the kind of God we serve. There's nothing too hard for him. He's sovereign. He's in control. And see, then when you focus and keep your eyes on Christ, and what you're doing is saying is, hey, whatever come my way, I know that God is able to subdue it. I know that God is in control. I know that these things will form, but they can't prosper unless God allow you to do so. And God is not a contradictory God. God is a God that he's not like man that he should lie. God, what he said, he's going to do. If God saved you, God did not save you to lose you. If God saved you, God is not going to turn around and cause you to perish. He's not a God that is manipulative. He's not a God that is uh, two-faced. He's not a God that has ulterior motive. His motive is agape love. And so, I can trust him. But see, what happened is we all become like Peter sometimes. We are focusing 
on the supernatural power of God to defy the natural power of this world. And all of a sudden, when things get going good, we take our eyes off of Jesus Christ. And that's the danger. We got to keep it. We got to keep him focused. We got to keep our eyes on him. We got to remain. We must stand, remain standing in the Lord if we're going to have peace. If we want to have peace, if we're going to be able to endure what we got to go through, because you ain't going to heaven without going through something. And I don't care who you are. Everybody's going to have some trouble. Job had right, man, born and woman is a few days, and those days are full of trouble. You got trouble, trouble coming. If you ain't had no trouble, you'll keep on living. Somebody say, ain't been no rain in your life, you wait a while. Rain coming your way. And, and you know what? I, I, I say this too. When rain, when it's not raining in your life, don't look at other folks and Take what they're going through for granted. Because surely as it's raining there, it's going to rain here. In some shape, form, or fashion. But, if it rains, we have a refuge. We have a shelter. We have somebody that is able to protect us. Somebody is able to keep us dry in the midst of the rain of trouble. And 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 and, 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 and if we stand, keep remain standing in the Lord, we, we, we can understand that we can go through as Jesus walking on that uh, on that sea that night. We don't have to be trying to doing all this there. We can walk straight through. We can walk with stability. We can walk settled. We ain't got to be bouncing up and down. Because of the fact, we know that the Lord is in control. It makes no difference what happened. Who has the final say so? Not the President of the United States of America. Not the governor of Alabama, Georgia, wherever you at. Not your boss. Not the doctors. Who has finally said so? The Lord. He has finally said so. He is Jehovah Elohim. He is Lord God Almighty. Look. We have to remember that when we come into relationship with God through Christ Jesus, God gives us his peace. His peace floods our soul, enter and infiltrate our life. Now listen, once he gives it to us, remember now that peace really belongs to God. We ought to be good stewards. We ought to maintain it. We ought to take care of it. We ought to cultivate it. We ought to nurse it. That it will be what it needs to be in our life. So that when Satan, when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, we don't become all torn into pieces. But because we are abiding and we are standing in the Lord, we still are of a solid mind. Our mind is not double, but it's solid. Because we are trusting in the solid rock. Our eyes are focused on us to this point. To leave us. Now, I, I, I'm going to let you go. I've been on this thing for about an hour now. Uh, and I thank God for each and every one of you. Thank you for stopping in this evening. I hope and pray that you've been blessed and you've been helped. My brothers and my sisters, 
because I, I want you to know as we continue to go through this coronavirus thing, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep on saying it. We're not going to live on a coronavirus. We're going to live on grace. God, grace is sufficient. And the strength is made perfect in weakness. And because we're going to live under grace, we're going to be able to go through the coronavirus. You know, uh, we have to understand that our eyes are on him. He will supply our every need if we just stay focused on him. Paul is in prison in Rome. Don't know what's going to happen. The outcome with Emperor uh, Nero. Uh, whether he's going to live or die. But yet this man is not sweating it. He's not stressing out. Paul is at peace. And what I mean by that. He has a wholeness and completeness. That this thing is not shaking him. And see, now let me, let me share something with you. And and, and, and we're going down in the text of our study. Prayer is one of those things. That's the reason why you have to have a, a, a prayer life. Your prayer life is very important. You need to learn how to pray. And you being and, and praying ain't about copying what other folks uh said. But prayer and prayer is the dialogue between you and God. You need to learn how to have intimate dialogue with God and talk to God. You ain't got to get on your knees every time you talk to God. You in your heart and, and I talk to him throughout the day. Even when people are present around me, I talk to him. You can talk to him. Tell him about your problem. Tell him about his goodness. Tell him about your concern. Tell him about your care. Tell him whatever you want to tell him. Talk to him. He's your company keeper. He's your God. He's your father. He loves you. He's, your, he's our God. He wants to take care of us. When people are against you, tell God about it. I don't got to the point now. I don't, people don't like me. So be it. They don't like me. That's your problem, not mine. Don't let other people's problem become your problem. Hello, somebody. Let me leave that alone. God bless you. Let me say a couple of things. Let me say, first of all, thank you for all of those that uh, participated in our Back to School 2021 school initiative. We were able to bless all three schools with a thousand dollars. And we thank you for your effort. To God be the glory. Uh, and uh, I really do appreciate the spirit of sharing and giving among our church family and our friends of Pine Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Next thing is I want to thank those who attended worship on this past Sunday, whether you did it virtually or you did it face to face. I thank you for being in attendance, and I, I said to those that was in attendance face-to-face, -face, I appreciate your cooperation. Yeah, there were one or two uh, little things where people then uh, do things like they're supposed to, but it's okay. There's nothing perfect in this world, and there's no perfect people in this world. But we thank God for things being as well as they are. Now, we want to say that on Sunday... We have worship service at 9 a.m. No, excuse me. Cut that. On Sunday, 9 a.m. is Sunday school. Sunday school. Uh, Reverend uh, King Alder Jones will be uh, the instructor. All right. At 9.40, we will have baptism. 9.40 a.m. baptism. And then at 10 a.m., we will begin our worship experience at Pine Hill. And we ask that those that should come be face-to-face, -face, let us be mindful of the protocols again. Make sure you wear your mask. Make sure that you practice social distancing, especially as you sit in the pews. Please do not sit with the pews in the pews where it says, please do not sit on this pew. Also, let's make sure that we refrain from handshakes and from hugging. Again, please refrain from handshakes and hugging. 
Now, if you want to do a fist bump, that's okay. If you want to do an elbow, that's okay. But also, I want to encourage you to make sure that you practice good hygiene. Wash your hands with soap and water or with hand sanitizer. There are hand sanitizers throughout the uh, station throughout the church in the hallway. So make sure that you wash your hands. Not that uh, we, uh, somebody is, is nasty now. We are trying to uh, flatten the curve, stop the spread of this coronavirus. Now, also, let me say this to you. As soon as worship is over, do not stand in the building and try to conversate. Exit the buildings and go on the outside and conversate. Go on the outside, take your mask off, and you can talk with no net line. And but finally, if you have not taken the vaccination, I, I you know I, I've been telling you go get your vaccination. I want to tell you do something else this time. Because I, I know most of you do this. When you're sick and you go to that doctor and the doctor give you medicine and tell you to take this medicine, if you have not taken it and got your vaccination, I'm going to ask you to go to your doctor, call your doctor, and have a conversation with your doctor and see what your doctor tells you. If your doctor tells you to take it, I believe you'll take it. I believe you'll take it. Go talk to your doctor. And then if you ought to have some confidence in that person, Especially since you've been going to them so many years. Quote, end quote. So, uh, go to, call your doctor. Or go have a doctor. Uh, go visit your doctor. And, let, and see what your doctor tells you. He might tell you not to. I don't know. That's your doctor. See what he tells you. But I, 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 I do strongly encourage you to. But. Yeah, listen, see, go, go to your doctor and see what they tell you. All right. Uh, let's see anything else. Oh, this my I may, I uh, accidentally made a mistake in issuing what uh, the uh, effort ministry is asking for you to donate. This month they're asking you to donate paper towels, not toilet tissue, but paper towels. So please, ma'am, please, sir, do that. Now let us remember there's death. Uh, uh, within our church family, members of our church family who are experiencing death in some shape, form, or fashion, please let's keep those families lifted up in prayer. Uh, we do not have any members, per se, of Pine Hill that uh, have left the ranks that I know of at this time, but there are members of our church family who have bereavement within their family. And so let us continue to lift them up in prayer. And there's a lot of sickness. And and, 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 and I want you to know that uh, sickness and death does not discriminate. They don't care what color you are. don't care how, what your age is. They don't care what your socioeconomic status is. Hello, somebody. They don't care what your gender is. So... My brothers and my sisters, let's pray for those who are sick, and let's pray for those who are bereaved, and let's pray for those who are duty-bound to pray for, and ask God to give us the mind to do what we should and need to do for those that we're able to do. And remember, God bless us to be a blessing unto others. So what you're going to do with your blessing, share it. What you're going to do with your blessing, share it. What you're going to do with your blessing, share it. Now remember, it's all kinds of blessings, but the most greatest, the most everlasting, internal blessing, the biggest blessing you ever get, it is Jesus Christ. So share Jesus with somebody. God bless you. God keep you. It's my prayer. Hopefully our new uh, newsletter will be out on Sunday. God bless you again. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for taking time out your busy schedule to spend a little time with me this evening as we look in God's word, God's peace. And remember, we must stand firm. We must stand in the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord God, for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord God, for being our God. We thank you, Lord God, for being not only our God, but our Father. We come right now, Lord God, because we realize that you are the only true and living God. 
God. Help us, our Lord God, to move forward. Help us, Lord God, to be safe. Help us, Lord God, to be uh, con- uh, to be constructive. Help us to be witnesses. Help us, Lord God, to spread your word. Help us to let our light shine that men may see the good works and glorify you in heaven. Lord God, we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for everyone that came and shared. And we ask a special blessing upon each and every one of them. And then, Lord God, we pray right now, Lord God, that you, Heavenly Father, will just continue to bless church families all across this universe. Lord God, I pray a special blessing upon Pine Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Lord God, bless us as saints to continue to understand that we are in a most blessed state because we have your peace with us. And Lord God, and as we go through, help us to keep our eyes on Christ. Help us to stay focused on Christ. Help us to be reminded by the death for that is written in Philippians chapter 4 verse 1 that we are not citizens of this world. But we are citizens of heaven. And the things of this world are only temperate. And but the things of heaven are eternal. And Lord God, that we understand that the things and the people of this world are not powerful as you are powerful. You have all power in your hand. These things are powerless. People are powerless when compared to you. Help us to keep stay focused. Help us remember that, Lord God, that you, Heavenly Father, have a plan for us. It's not a plan of failure. It's not a plan of where we perish or we are condemned, but it's a plan where we prosper. It's a plan where we are successful. It's a plan where we are saved. It's a plan, Lord God, that where we live our eternity with you. Help us to stay focused. Help us to go through, because, Lord God, we realize greater is waiting on us, and we thank you for that. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. Good evening.